Now, whenever it comes to life insurance, the most common question that clients would ask is the question of, which is better for me, buy them, invest the rest, or a whole life plan? Now, this is a very good question. I can certainly understand the need to know the differences as it is quite a huge decision to be made. In this video, I would like to walk you through the numbers behind these two strategies so that you can have a better understanding of the quantitative behavior of each of these strategies. Hopefully by the end of this video, you can decide which strategy are you more comfortable with. And without further ado, let's get started. What is buy term invest the rest and the two type of approaches? Now before we delve into this topic, let me just take some time to explain what buy term invest the rest is and what are the two different approaches available. Now buy term invest the rest is a strategy where you spend a fraction of your budget on a term insurance and invest the differences instead of spending the entire budget on a whole life insurance plan. The common understanding here is that if you were to invest the difference, instead of utilizing the entire budget on a whole life insurance, we will be better off as the returns from buy term invest rest approach will be higher than the returns from a whole life insurance. Having said that, there are two ways on which you can construct a buy term invest rest portfolio. The first is an apple to apple replacement where you design your term insurance in a way that mimics the exact behavior of a whole life insurance plan that covers you for a lifetime. The second is a more common approach of buy term invest the rest where you design your term insurance in a way that just covers you for a predetermined period. And beyond that, there is no coverage. Now each of these approaches will have a very different cost, coverage and portfolio value behavior, which is what we'll be looking at next. Parameters for comparison. Now to facilitate this analysis, here are the parameters that were used for this comparison. Please pause this video if you want to digest the information. In terms of cash value behavior of the whole life plan, I've taken an average of both the values based on an estimate of 3% and 4.25% investment return. By doing so, we are being more realistic instead of being too optimistic or pessimistic when it comes to the expected returns of your whole life insurance policies. With that out of the way, here are the findings. Findings on the payout receivable. For starters, let's take a look at how much we will receive in the event of a claim. For context, the total payout receivable will be the sum of the insurance coverage receivable plus the estimated investment value. By applying a return rate of 2.5% for both approaches, a term life plan will provide a higher payout receivable before the coverage expires or step down at 70 years old. Beyond 70, a whole life plan will provide a higher payout receivable. By applying a return of 4%, approach 1 shares the same finding as to the previous behavior, while for approach 2, a term life will yield a slightly higher payout receivable throughout the entire duration. By applying a return of 6%, approach 1 provides a very similar payout behavior between the term life and the whole life plan, while for approach 2, Term life would yield a higher payout receivable throughout the entire duration. Findings on the surrender value. The next thing that we look at is the surrender value. For context, the surrender value would be the sum of the estimated cash value of the insurance policy and the estimated investment value accumulated. By applying a return of 2.5% for approach 1, a whole life plan would provide a higher surrender value throughout the entire duration. While for approach 2, a term life plan will provide a higher surrender value before the age of 55. From 55 years old onwards, a whole life plan will provide a higher surrender value. By applying a return of 4% for approach 1, a whole life plan will provide a higher surrender value throughout the entire duration, while for approach 2, the term life will provide a slightly higher surrender value throughout the entire duration. By applying a return of 6%, approach 1 provides a similar surrender value behavior between the term life and the whole life plan, while for approach 2, term life would yield a higher payout receivable throughout the entire duration. Summary of findings. All things considered, this is the summary of the findings for both the behavior of the payout receivable in the event of a claim and also the behavior of the surrender value for both approaches. For approach 1, unless your return rate is higher than 6% a year, a whole life plan will be quantitatively better than a buy term invest the rest approach. For approach two, which is the more common one, a buy term invest the rest approach will be quantitatively better 
than a whole life plan, it can achieve a return of 4% per year. Additional considerations and personal stance. Now, despite being fully capable of earning a return of more than 6% per year, I would still prefer to use a whole life plan to act as the foundation of our insurance portfolio and provide for my long-term coverage needs. The reason for saying so is because, number one, to achieve a 4 to 6% returns a year, I will need to take on additional risk that chances are is higher than the risk of a return of the whole life plan itself. From a risk-adjusted standpoint, I believe that a whole life insurance plan would make more sense. Number two, I prefer to keep my insurance and investments separate in a sense whereby the efficacy of my insurance strategy is not reliant on my investment performances. The reason why I say this is because in theory, earning a 4, 6, 8 or even 10% a year seems very doable. In practice, it is not as easy as it seems to be because of discipline and emotional factors that may impede your performances. By keeping my insurance and investments separate, it will not impact the quality of my decision-making process, especially during tough times, because the last thing you want to have for yourself is the constant thought that if your investments fail to perform, both your insurance and investment strategy would have been compromised. Summary. Now, at the end of the day, I think what matters the most is that you understand what are the benefits and risks of a buy-term invest-the-rest approach and a whole-life insurance approach before you commit to either one. You should also take into consideration as to how your decisions in your insurance planning will affect other areas of your financial planning such as your investments, children's education, and retirement planning. Do take into consideration of the qualitative factors as well to determine which strategy will be more suitable to you from a holistic financial planning standpoint. Now that's all I have for this video today. If you do not know how to get started with your insurance planning, or if you do not have the time to do your market research, you can consider engaging an independent financial advisor who can help you make sense of the market and shortcut your insurance planning process. To find out more information about how you can benefit from my financial and insurance planning services, you can check out what I do on my website and reach out to me directly. The link is in the description below. Do remember to subscribe to this channel to stay updated with the weekly uploads. Stay safe and I hope to hear from you soon.